fucking did it. You, you fucking did it. Fucking proud of you, Jimmy D. You don't take no fucking shit off no body. Now do yourself a favor, okay? Don't say we're parting ways with Phil Jackson. Say we fired you, you cocksucker, okay? You're fucking fired. Now take your fucking yoga mat and go the fuck back to Montana. Ding dong, the witch is dead, the witch is dead, the witch is dead. Ding dong, the wicked witch is fucking dead. You gotta call Charles Oakley up. You're gonna make amends. You're gonna have a sit down with him tonight. You're gonna make that whole situation go away. All right, you gotta call up Oak. Make things right with Oak. But I am proud of you, Jimmy D. You got the juice now. It's your city. Wow. Wow, wow, wow. Knicks Fan TV, episode two. Where do we begin, man? It's it's um, un- unbelievable turn of events. Let's go. Things are changing by the day. C Black here, NYC Jedi on the other side. What's happening, ladies and gentlemen? Like you say, episode two. Um, before we get into the obvious news, uh, we just want to say first and foremost, last week at the launch of episode one, it was a smashing success. Uh, we were out there on the night of the draft last Thursday, in and around the garden, inside, outside, just feeling, getting a tone of the city, getting a pulse of the city. On um, There's a lot of news going on even from last week. You know, you had the, the Phil Porzingis war. You didn't know if, if Porzingis was getting traded on draft day. Rumors were flying around. Phoenix was interested. Boston was interested. Um, so, you know, we, we just took the pulse of the city, man. It, it was a fun night. We got your predictions for the draft. We got your post-draft reactions. And um, it, it's just the movement is, is growing. The movement is coming at us fast, man. And, you know, social media has really been reacting well. Uh, YouTube has been reacting well. So... Uh, Thanks for supporting us as always and um, make sure you hit that subscribe button below and uh, Check us out on social media at Knicks fan TV very easy. Uh, We're on Facebook Twitter Instagram YouTube you name it So just uh, reach out to us and um, we'll be there man We'll be there giving you the the best of the fan reactions news highlights interviews um, And just good things to come (sighs) Jedi what is going on? First off, I wake up this morning. To my missed phone call? To one to your missed phone call. And to several texts. My brother-in-law texts me 3.30 a.m. Talking about Phil is gone. Another homie talking about see you, Phil. So I'm like, yo, I'm, I'm thinking I'm dreaming for a second. Like, I had to make sure I wasn't in a sunken place or something, bro. Because... I was completely lost. I mean, the way the week was trending, you never thought we were getting to this point. I mean, the week started off Monday. It was, Melo wants to stay. He wants to be closer to his kid. Everybody's like, okay, cool, sounds good. Tuesday comes, boom. Melo wants a buyout. Wednesday comes, boom. Phil's gone. So, I mean, it's just... This is the Knicks, man. I mean, this is this is what it's all about with the Knicks. Um, always in the news for all the wrong reasons. But nevertheless, here we are, man. So, you know, I was stunned. But um, I think the events leading up to this and, and really just looking at the last three years on a whole, um, I think it was needed, man. So what do you think on that? I'm... <laughs> For a long time going into this whole situation with the Knicks, I mean, I, I, I thought that um, there was so much tension amongst Knicks fans. We were so divided uh, between the pro Phil guys, uh, the, you, you know, obviously the guys who didn't enjoy Phil. And let's just go back a little bit. Let's, let's kind of take a step back. He comes here. Um, he's tatted it to Savior. I mean, I, I definitely welcomed him. Um, I, I always thought that, you know, uh, we're looking into his 11 rings a little bit too much. Um, but, you know, credit where credit is due. The, the news of the Phil firing for sure is a shock. Uh, I think that comes um, with the territory of the Knicks. I mean, uh, this team never ceases to surprise me um, at the end of the day. 
uh, as you alluded to, we are always in the news for the wrong reasons. And <clears throat> it's never about basketball. It's always about um, some type of controversy. Um, you know, and going this season, really, honestly, uh, obviously you and I have had our conversations based on um, Phil Jackson, pros and cons. And uh, I, I recognize that he, he wasn't a great GM. I, I, I think that he made some mistakes during his tenure that was really questionable. So uh, completely shocked. Uh, I did not think this was going to happen. Uh, I don't know what to say. This early uh, into this early uh, in the league or this late <laughs> in the summer. But so, um, hey, wh- uh, what are we going to do uh, right now? I think we have a lot of bigger fish to fry, and and hopefully this is one piece um, that we can kind of let the dust settle and move forward. Uh, yeah, I, I was shocked, man. I, I was shocked. But you know what? Um, you know, I've been a, a, a Phil, semi-Phil apologist. You know, I think um, I've defended him more so than I have, uh, you know, condemned him on, on his moves. But I think, number one, give credit where credit is due. Um, you know, as Knicks fans, we, we have this animosity towards Dolan. He stepped in when we needed him to step in. I mean, he give credit where credit is due. A- as much as Dolan gets criticized for his meddling here and there. Yes, JD, the leader of JD and the straight shot, ladies and gentlemen. The late night crooner himself. When you thought he was really gonna just let Phil hold the reins. And, and you know, we thought that he was really gonna be hands off and say, you know, he kept saying on those interviews, ask Phil, ask Phil, I'm hands off. I never really trusted that, bro. I always knew Dolan was always gonna keep tabs on this team, and it was. It, and if it got to a point, he was gonna pull the reins. I, I, I figured he was he was gonna do that. Yeah, you know, if you go back to the press conference, Phil came here. He said, uh, "We're gonna switch the culture up." That never happened. The cesspool is, is still as volatile as it was before he got here, right? He said, "We're gonna play team ball, chemistry, this, that, and the third. That never happened. You still got Melo here, which, you know, I love Melo as much as anybody. That's still my favorite player on this team, favorite player in the league. But, you know, his style of play, the bully ball, isolation Melo, that was never going to work. Then you bring in, on top of that, Derrick Rose, another bully ball, isolation guy. So, it just never, the vision was just up and down, up and down, up and down. No consistency to the vision. Thirdly, he said... He, he spoke on media transparency and if you reflect even on this season there was no you didn't hear from him until when at the end of the year i mean you heard from charlie rosen who i'm convinced is really just phil jackson that's just his pen name <laughs> charlie, charlie rosen doesn't exist it's, it's like michael jordan and johnny kilroy you know what i'm saying like charlie rosen is really just phil jackson just airing out his, his, his feelings, you know. But but I say that to say you heard from more from Charlie Rosen than you heard from Phil Jackson. So, uh, you know, legacy standpoint, I, I think it, it's it's still left to be seen based on the fact, and I only say based on the fact that you still gotta give him credit for KP. You have Willie Hernan Gomez who just had the, the made the All Rookie Team. You don't know what that's gonna be. He brought in some young guys. He, he brought in some guys off the scrap heap that look like they may have staying power. And most recently, you know, he brought in Frank. So, legacy-wise, I think, you know, obviously in the in the immediate term, you're going to give him an F as a failure. But we'll see what, what happens on the legacy front. Well, what's, what's your take on that? You do bring up good points. Um, I guess alluding to the fact during the press conferencing, the press conference, rather, and... Going back to the point where media transparency, uh, team ball, um, getting back to basics, you're 100% right, and you hit the nail on the head. And as an anti-Phil guy, um, that really kind of put a lot of things in perspective. But also at the same time, what we say is not usually what we do, um, especially when it comes to sports. Um, let's be let's be completely frank. Phil Jackson came into this situation with 11 rings as a coach to as a player um, with no GM experience. And that was my biggest qualm at, at the beginning. I, I said, listen, we're reading into the rings too much. I don't think he's the greatest person to 
begin a rebuild because I think at that point you had Mello, um, you had a couple malcontents and Tyson Chandler when when Phil came, Jr. and Shump were still on the team, and you know he made the appropriate moves to get the bad juju off of the team, and I think that, that was a step in the right direction. But the method, the method that he he he. He, now, I'm not going to go back into the Tyson Tran trade. I'm not going to go into the Shrump GR trade. But the return for those type of players, um, especially Cedar Production, I'm not going to harp on the fact that these guys won a championship. Tyson Chandler played really well in Phoenix. Uh, because it really has kind of created a rift between a lot of Knicks fans. And I, I want to look past that um, because I really think we aren't all Knicks fans. We're all in the same boat. Um, I want to kind of move past that. But you're right. I just think that in regards to his legacy... He did a lot of good things here. I mean, he drafted extremely well. Um, he's done very well in terms of uh, identifying talent. And I don't know if that's him or his scout team, but nonetheless, from all the good he did in terms of our youth movement, I have, without a doubt, I cannot question that by any stretch, except when he included the shade of Jerry and Grant. I like Jerry and Grant, but again, another story for another day. But at the end of the day, what he did negatively outweighed the positive. And, and that's why Phil Jackson isn't here today. And what I'm looking at, at this now moving forward, I know a lot of pundits are saying, well, where do we go from now? Here, we drafted um, Frank, Frank as a, a triangle guard. I'm like, listen, players don't, we don't draft, NBA players don't get drafted because of their ability to play in certain schemes. They get drafted because of their ability to step it up on the NBA level. So whatever whatever scheme we have, Frank will be able to adapt. And I'm still looking at this, despite that being Phil's guy or Phil's pick, it's a good it's a good draft, draft pick, in, in my opinion. I'm excited to see him. Um, and let's maybe look at this as an era of James Dolan turning a new leaf. Um, he kept, he has to keep a pulse on the team. It's the New York Knicks at the end of the day. He is the owner. Um, he said all the right things in the past three years in terms of meddling. He said, it's Phil's job, leave it to Phil, ask Phil. And that was a step for me in the right direction because that's completely the opposite he's done, you know, since he's since he's kind of took over the team in the early 2000s. So I like the fact that maybe this is James Dolan going, listen, I will step back from basketball operations. However, I am still the boss. And if I start to see things that I believe are not in the best interest of my team, then I need to step foot and do something about it. And that's what he did. And I, I, I got to give kudos to James Dolan for making that move because I, that was uh, that was he did entrust this guy to do things. But I think James also understood, like, listen, the whole mellow thing was not the best way to handle it. I gave you a pass. Um, and then entering free agency and the summer league and the draft, the, the thing with Porzingis. I think Phil Jackson kind of just wrote his own demise at that point. Going forward, it, as far as what's next, I mean, that's going to be the biggest question mark is, is what's going to happen with Melo. Are we going to buy him out, add that 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 t cap penalty, and, and come back with, with nothing, cleaning up after Phil? Or are we going to keep him here? Is he going to be happy here? You know, it's, it's a lot of questions. As far as the Frank pick... Uh, I'm with you, bro. I, I saw a lot of criticism, a lot of criticism on Sports Talk Radio, a lot of criticism on the social media networks. Oh, that, oh, you know, we, we, we drafted this triangle player. And now that Phil's gone, he's just going to disappear back into, you know, uh, something terrible, which I right. think is, is, is the most ridiculous thing I ever heard. First and foremost, I think 90% of people that even speak on the triangle have no idea what it even is. It, it, you know, it, it's become a word to just connotate Negative, negative basketball negative basketball and, and so it's like you know people need to understand that this kid was highly touted from even last year and that had nothing to do with triangle that was just from evaluating prospects for the nba draft he was high on a lot of teams draft board we even heard that dallas and mark cuban was after him if we didn't take him they were going to take him so we'll see give the kid a chance he's 18 years old like I said, we need defense here, and if that is one of his skill sets, then let it be. You know, we'll see. Let the, when the smoke clears, we'll see what this kid is gonna be on this team. And no matter the system, I think you know if he's if it's meant for him to be a good player, he will be a good player. As far as what's next, as far as who do we replace Phil with, 
um, you know, the, the next story that you heard early uh, the morning of the firing was that the Knicks were interested in uh, Masai Ujiri with Toronto. Um, now, he's a guy who's currently on the contract. So, you know, in the beginning I was saying, all right, well, that's a good move. But then it's like, do you really want to give up picks just to obtain the, the next president of his team? And it would be a Nick-like move to give up picks to the guy that has fleeced the Knicks for draft picks over the last 10 years. Uh, it's just, the, just the final the, fleece. Yeah, just the final fleecing, just to bring him aboard and have him sell off more draft picks and do nothing. So I, th- I think we need to be leery of that. Um, I heard Mark Jackson's name being bandied about. Listen, I, I love Mark Jackson as much as anybody, except for his pace of years. But, you know... Number one, I think he's blackballed from the league for some reason, uh, and it's becoming evident year in and year out when he doesn't get any type of interviews for any type of role in this league except for commentating. But number two, we need somebody with experience here that's in it for the long haul, that knows what they're doing, that could come in, set up a team properly, and, and really you know, get this team on a charted course around Porzingis, around Frank, around Billy, these Euro kids. You know, and, and and really lead us from from that standpoint. Yeah, I mean, um, in t- in terms of Phil's successor, uh, I, I'm actually, I, you know what? And you'll probably be shocked to hear this, dude. Honestly, I'm taking a step back, man. Um, I don't I don't want to rush to anything. Um, so you, so you want Steve Mills leading the charts? And I'm not I'm not indicating. I'm not. I'm not <laughs> <laughs> No, I'm not saying Steve Mills is the answer, um, but what what good does it do if we let Steve Mills go tomorrow, right? Um, who goes to his place? Alan Houston? I mean, I, maybe, but I don't really see that happening. Steve Mills worked really closely with Phil Jackson. Um, I'm sure Phil and Steve uh, had their agreements and disagreements, but Steve he's capable enough to navigate this team at least for the time being i'd even entrust him for the season because at the end of the day unless he makes a major move aside from Melo, what's he really gonna do uh to to put us in a bad position i think if he follows phil's mantra which let's go back to giving phil a little bit kudos on this let's think about this this is the first time since 2005 i believe the knicks had have had a first and second consecutive round pick like, that's huge. And moving forward, we're going to have that because we've kept all our assets. All those bad trades that we've created, uh, that we push assets out, those are off the books. We have all of our draft picks, so that's that. The other thing is that, kudos to Phil, we now have an extremely young and capable core. Centered around KP, you've got Willie, you've got Frank, you've got guys like Kuz. Um, We've got a really solid team, and on top of that, we have a dynamic score in Carmelo Anthony. When I look at this team right now, let's say there was no saga, we weren't competing for a championship, and it's we were starting anew, and you look at that roster, you're pretty confident that you can win some games next year. Let's do it that. Let's go out there. Let's play hard-nosed basketball. Let's let Jeff Hornacek implement the system that he wants to implement. Let's play this year out. And that goes for Carmelo Anthony too. It would be extremely asinine to buy him out at this point. He's owed 50 plus million dollars. What do you think, given Carmelo's history thus far, would be the negotiation of a buyout? He's gonna try to recruit at least three quarters of that. On top of that, we take cap hits regardless of the stretch provision. We don't need to do that. We've seen how that's crippled us in the past. We need to build our brand back because at the end of the day, what Phil's really done is he's turned free agents off to this town. And I will not put that solely on Phil. The people who have done that things behind him, New York's not that pop- popular for destination, I think, for the last five seasons. Um, but let's kind of let's let the dust settle and let's kind of start from square one. We've got a solid core. We've got a great, great foundation in KP. Um, with Mello, I'm saying, hey, Mello, it's two, you've got two years on your deal. Play this year out. If you feel like there's traction, you pick up that option next year. If not, you have the choice to get out of here. So um, I'm just really looking forward to just going into Summer League and fleshing out a roster, 
trying to get some free agents to come here, staying within the cap, and just playing basketball. Because at the end of the day, that's really what it is. I, I, the drama, I, we don't need it. <laughs> so um, I'm trying to get back to basketball. That's that's really my take on things right now. And you hit the nail on the head, man. I, I think we can afford to wait on the next president of this team. I don't want any type of big name or not even big name, mid-market free agents. I mean, I'm hearing Jeff Teague and, and the Knicks have mutual mutual interests. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, number one, we don't need Jeff Teague. And number two, the only mutual interest is that Jeff Teague want to come here for a check. I mean, we we, we know the, 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 the aid, the, the, we know the tendency of these free agents to leverage the Knicks in free agency, number one, to see if they can get a check, or number two, to see if the next stupid team We'll, we'll pony up a, a, a check. Forget Jeff Teague. He's bringing his team nowhere, and, and it's just a waste of money. Build this team around the youth. I'm not worried about any type of free agent for the next two to three years. And let's let Hornacek implement his system, see what he can do. He deserved it. He, he went through this whole year uh, uh, being micromanaged by Phil, which was just completely strange. Um, but, you know, so he, he deserves to have his fair shake. But we don't, we don't know, you know, this is the garden. Thing, as you see, things change uh, on the stop of a dime. So we'll see what happens. Um, so everybody just continue to stay tuned. Once again, hit that subscribe button. Hit us up on social media. And, um, you know, be sure to send us your DMs too. We want to hear from the fans. We want to hear your thoughts on the Phil Jackson firing. I'd, I'd really love to see um, what you guys think in terms of the pro Phil supporters. Um, I'd like your take on it. Um, I'm trying to be as even keel as possible. I will be the first one to say that I didn't enjoy his tenure here. Um, but he has done, I'm, I'm, he's done good things. So, yeah, definitely engage with us. Uh, we'd love to hear your comments, as my uh, partner has alluded to. Um, and, yeah, let's keep it going, man. Let's, let's get back to basketball. Knicks Fan TV, keep it locked. Peace. Deuces.